Okay, today we are going to cover AP review topic number three, which is called Contextual Questions Accumulating Rates of Change. So we are going to begin with a calculator problem. In fact, if you glance through this packet, all the questions are calculator questions today, and there's actually a total of seven because this is a very highly tested topic and it is most usually found on the calculator section of the exam. So the prompt reads, for t values from 0 to 31 inclusive, the rate of change of the number of mosquitoes on tropical island at time t days is modeled by r of t equals 5 times the square root of t times cosine of the quantity t divided by 5 mosquitoes per day. There are 1,000 mosquitoes on tropical island at the time t equals 0. Part A says show that the number of mosquitoes is increasing at the time t equals 6. So to start, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have a calculator in your hands and you're going to press y equals in your calculator and enter our R of T equation in Y1. And you're going to want that there um, because we'll be using that same equation on all parts. And you just want to enter it once very carefully, checking to make sure everything is accurate. And then you won't have to do it over and over again as you move through the problem. So for part A, they want us to show that the number of mosquitoes is increasing you have a note card that has the word increasing on it. And <clears throat> hopefully you remember what was on the back of that. Um, to show something is increasing, the derivative must be positive. And so we don't actually have an equation for the number of mosquitoes to take the derivative of, but we have an R of T equation, which represents the rate of change of mosquitoes over time. So in fact, it is a derivative equation already. So to figure out whether the number of mosquitoes is increasing at time t equals six, we just need to substitute a six into the equation. You can do this on your home screen if you just uh, type in alpha trace y1 and then open a parenthesis, type in a 6, close the parenthesis and press enter. So that's r of 6 is what we evaluated. You're allowed to use your calculator to do that evaluating but you must write that down on your paper. Uh, you could also write the actual equation with 6 subbed into both t um, variables, but that's not necessary. That would be writing more than you need to. So hopefully when you do this, you get 4.438. And if not, double check how you've entered that equation and make sure you've got it correct and that you're also in radian mode since this is a cosine problem. And what is significant about this number is just the, the sign of the number. So we're going to say greater than zero, or you could also write out in words is positive. Therefore, the number of mosquitoes is increasing. I'm sorry for the messy handwriting. My stylus is broken and I'm writing with my finger. Okay, moving on to part B. It says, at the time t equals 6, is the number of mosquitoes increasing at an increasing rate? Or is the number of mosquitoes increasing at a decreasing rate? Give a reason for your answer. So this is talking about the rate of change of the rate of change. Since the R of T equation is giving us the rate of change of mosquitoes, we're going to take the derivative of that equation to find out how it is changing. So we're going to evaluate R prime of 6, which we can do on our calculator on the home screen by hitting alpha window 
option three for n deriv, then we're going to type in ddx alpha window y1 such that x equals 6. So when you do that, you should get negative 1.913. The significance of that number is just that it is negative. So the number of mosquitoes is increasing at a decreasing rate at the time t equals 6. And the reason is because it is negative. R prime of 6 is negative. So we're going to say increasing at a decreasing rate. Try very carefully to use the same words that they use in the problem when answering the question. And on your home screen, this should look like d d x of y1 such that x equals 6, in case I went too fast with describing the calculator. Because since I'm making a video, you do not have a look at what I'm typing into the calculator. But normally, please do not write anything in calculator syntax on your free response questions of your AP exam. They do not want to see anything that was about button pushing in the calculator or how it looked on the calculator screen. They only want to see mathematical symbols and mathematical explanations. The things that you put on your note cards are the ideal answers to these problems, the ideal um, justification and reason behind each of these um, problems, answers. Okay, part C says, according to the model, how many mosquitoes will be on the island at time t equals 31? Round your answer to the nearest whole number. Okay, so we are actually wanting to know the number of mosquitoes. R of t is the rate of change of mosquitoes per day. So that's not how many mosquitoes there are. That's how the number of mosquitoes is changing over time. So what do we have to do to the R of t equation, the rate of change equation, in order to actually find out how many mosquitoes there are? Well, um, that's working backwards from the derivative, which to do that, we're going to need to integrate, okay? So the, we're going to integrate the R of t equation, and we're actually going to want to know exactly how many mosquitoes are on the island. So the limits of integration are going to be from 0 to 31, because as you can see up at the top in the prompt, our time values start at 0 and go to 31 days. It says we'll be on the island at time t equals 31. The other thing we have to take into consideration is this piece of information given in the prompt. There are 100 mosquitoes on the island at time t equals 0. So we're starting with uh, 1,000. I might have said 100, but I meant 1,000. So we're going to start with 1,000, and then we're going to add to that the integral from 0 to 31 of r of t dt. And we're going to type that in the calculator exactly as it appears, except for instead of r of t, we will put in alpha trace and choose y1. When you do that, you are going to get um, a decimal, but they want your answer rounded to the nearest whole number. So rounded to the nearest whole number, hopefully you will get 964 mosquitoes. Now, um, please, as we're going through the video, be typing these things in your own calculator, making sure that you know how to do so and get the correct answer at the end. That's something you're going to need to be practicing and getting very skilled at as we move through these problems. All right, part D. To the nearest whole number, what is the maximum number of mosquitoes for 
the times from 0 to 31 days inclusive. Show the analysis that leads to your conclusion. Okay, so what are they asking us for? The maximum, which could also be read the absolute maximum, the most number of mosquitoes. So we have a process that we use to show whether we've got an absolute maximum. Absolute maximums can occur at endpoints or critical numbers. So we're going to need to check the number of mosquitoes at time zero, which is handy because we already have that in the prompt, it's a thousand. Also, the number of mosquitoes at time 31 days, which is what we solved in part C, 964. So that's not gonna be the absolute maximum. We started with more than that. And then also at the critical numbers. Critical numbers are found by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. The derivative of the number of mosquitoes equation is the derivative of the equation we just wrote in part C. If you take the derivative of that, which was the number of mosquitoes equation, the 1,000 derivative of 1,000, which is a constant, would be zero. And the derivative of the integral undoes that and is just left with r of t. So we're setting r of t equal to zero. You could have also thought of that as just the rate of change of the number of mosquitoes over time, which was given in the prompt. That should be equal to zero um, if we're at an, a critical value. So that must be written on the paper. Once you have that written on the paper, you can find the zeros of that equation in the calculator. To do that, you're going to graph the function and you are going to um, change your window so that it's got x min of zero and x max of 31. Feel free to pause the video if this is going too fast. Um, and then you're going to use the second and trace button to go to the calculate menu and calculate the zeros, which you have to do by going left bound, right bound, enter for guess, so you're moving the cursor to the left side of the x-intercept, pressing enter, to the right side of the x-intercept, pressing enter, and then pressing enter again when it asks for a guess. And then you're gonna do that to find each critical value. So hopefully when you're looking at your graph from zero to 31 along the x-axis, you see two x-intercepts. Um, and I, you might wanna pause the video but I'm gonna spoil the surprise and tell you that those are, well, we're gonna make a little chart here. When the time is zero, we're gonna need to know how many mosquitoes then. Time of 7.854. Keep in mind, you can write this down rounded to the three decimal places, but you must use every digit your calculator calculates to figure out how many mosquitoes occur at that time. So your calculator will store that value as X and you might want to go ahead and calculate the number of mosquitoes while that's still stored as X before you go on and find the next zero. Then the next zero will be at 23.562. Again, I've written it down, rounded off, but you must use all the decimals to compute the number of mosquitoes. And then 31 is the other endpoint. So we know there's a thousand mosquitoes at the time t equals zero. And then at 7.854, to compute that, we need to show them the integral that we're using our calculator to do, which is going to be the same as the last problem. 1,000 plus the integral from 0 to, we'll say t, whatever the time value is, of r of x dx. I've changed the x in as the independent variable because it needs to be different from the time that I have as my upper limit of integration. But this integral should be shown in your work for this problem. You don't have to write it out with both values if you're using t to represent both. So then um, 
Oh, and we are rounding the number of mosquitoes to the nearest whole number because it says to the nearest whole number in the question. So at the time 7.854, you should get 1,039 mosquitoes. That doesn't look like a one. Let's click it backwards. Seven, sorry, 1,039. And at 20, the time 23.562, the number of mosquitoes is 842 and we already said at the time 31 we have 964 I apologize for the messy finger handwriting okay so let's go back to the question and make sure we're answering the question asked it says to the nearest whole number what is the maximum number of mosquitoes and so that answer would be 1000 39. You must indicate your answer. You can't just assume they know that you found the biggest number in the table. You must indicate that that is your answer. It needs to be clear. But um, that is all the work that needs to be shown to justify this absolute maximum problem. You will see many more of these absolute max or absolute mins. The work would be just the same to find an absolute min. So you can see from our table the absolute minimum number of mosquitoes is 842 based on what we just did, that, that we could have answered that question just as easily with the work we just did. Okay, next question. Okay, so for our next question, the tide removes sand from Sandy Point Beach at a rate modeled by the function r, given by r of t equals 2 plus 5 times the sine of 4 pi t divided by 25. A pumping station adds sand to the beach at a rate modeled by the function s given by s of t equals 15t divided by 1 plus 3t. Both r of t and s of t have, cubic, have units of cubic yards per hour and t is measured in hours for times from 0 to 6 inclusive. At time t equals zero, the beach contains 2,500 cubic yards of sand. How much sand will the tide remove from the beach during the six hour period? Indicate units of measure. Okay, so whenever I approach a problem like this before I even start trying to solve anything, I first go into my calculator. This is another calculator problem. Press y equals and type in both functions. You may need to clear your memory out from the last problem, second plus 712. And then um, I always, if there's more than one function given in a problem, put the first one written in the problem in Y1 and the second one written in the problem in Y2. That way I won't forget which one is which and don't have to keep looking back. So be sure to type those equations in. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you need more time than what I'm allowing to get things done. So how much sand will, rem uh, will the tide remove from the beach? So we have a removal function, that's the R of T1, um, but that is not telling us how much sand is removed, that is the rate of change that the sand is being removed from the beach. So in order to actually find out the amount, the quantity of sand that the tide removes, we're going to have to integrate the rate of change equation. So um, we will do the integral from six hour period, so zero to six of R of T dt. And that is all the work that needs to be shown on the paper, but that must be shown. You can then do this integral in your calculator by going to the home screen and pressing alpha window option four for function integration. Type in your lower limit of integration zero, upper limit of integration six, and then in the parentheses hit alpha trace y1 because our R of T equation was the first one in the problem, so it's the first one we entered in the calculator. And then DX, 
and then you can press enter and hopefully the answer that you get will be 31.816 and it says indicate units of measure we're talking about the amount of sand so this would be measured in cubic yards okay definitely be typing these in to make sure that you can get the same result from your calculator that's some a skill you need to practice accuracy all right part b write an expression for y of t we're writing an expression for y of t that's going to start y of t equals the total number of cubic yards of sand on the beach at time t so if we actually want to know how much sand is on the beach we are going to have to just like in the last problem do integrals of the rates of change of how the sand is changing over time now the remove the sand that's removed is going to need to be subtracted the sand that's being pumped onto the beach is going to be added and then we also have to consider at time zero the beach contains 2500 cubic yards of sand so to begin with we have 2500 which we'll have to add to the amount of sand after both actions removed sand is removed and sand is added so we're going to integrate from time zero and then the upper limit of integration is going to be the variable t now since we are using t as the upper limit of integration we don't want it to be the independent variable in our integram so even though we've got s of t and r of t we want to change those to s of x and r of x so that the variable is different from the limit of integration so we would want to add s of x the integral from 0 to t of s of x and subtract the integral from 0 to t of r of x and then we'll have dx you could write those as two separate integrals anything algebraically equivalent is accepted but um, that's not necessary one integral will take care of all of it so part C find the rate at which the total amount of sand on the beach is changing at the time t equals 4 so that's the rate of change of the equation that we just wrote in the last problem so we are going to take the derivative of our y of t equation so that'll be y prime of t and when you take the derivative of 2500 well the derivative of a constant is zero so we don't need that anymore the derivative of the integral those are inverse operations they're going to undo each other we're going to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus and that independent variable of time on the upper limit of integration will be in place of the x's in our integrand so we'll have s of t minus r of t and now we actually need this evaluated when t is 4 so we're going to say s of 4 minus r of 4 and you can do this in your calculator on your home screen just type in alpha trace y2 is s of t parentheses 4 close parentheses minus alpha trace y1 open parentheses 4 close parentheses and then press enter hopefully you will get negative 1.909 and now for part d it says for times from 0 to 6 inclusive at what time t is the amount of sand on the beach a minimum what is the minimum value justify your answers all right so this is a lot like part d of the previous problem we worked that was an absolute maximum problem this is an absolute minimum problem so there is specific things that they are looking for in your work first <coughs> you're going to have to make a table and have um 
both endpoints, so that's going to be t of 0 and t of 6 in the table, as well as any critical values that there might be um, included for time. So we've got at time one, uh, 0, sorry, at time 0, we have 2,500 cubic yards of sand. Now we need to look for critical values. We find the critical values by taking the derivative that we just wrote the equation for in part C and setting that equal to 0 and solving for when the derivative is equal to 0. That gets our critical values. So we can do that in the calculator. If you go to y equals, um, go down to y3. And in y3, you're going to type in alpha trace y2 minus alpha trace y1. So now we have a new equation in y3 that represents y prime of t. You need to move your little cursor on top of the equals between y1 and the R of t equation and press enter. What you'll see happen is it's like a little light switch gets turned off. The equals is no longer highlighted, which means we can still use that equation, but it will not appear on the graph. Then we're going to go over the equals sign between y2 and the s of t equation and press enter on it also so that it is still able to be used, but not going to appear on the graph. And so only our y3 equals will be highlighted and that will show on the graph. Then we want to go to our window and adjust the x min to 0 and the x max to 6 so that we're only looking for zeros between 0 and 6. We're going to hit graph and then we're going to use the uh, second trace button for the calculate menu to calculate the zeros. You're going to have to do left bound moving to the left of the x-intercept pressing enter right bound arrowing to the right side of the x-intercept pressing enter enter again at guess and then hopefully the value that you get from your calculator will be 5.118 for the x-coordinate of the x-intercept that's the zero there's only one and so then the other number we're going to need in our table is going to be the other endpoint 6. So now we need to calculate how much sand y of t is on the beach at these other two times. Your calculator has currently stored this x coordinate of the 0 that you calculated as um, x. in you. So if you go back to your home screen you can type in 2500 plus, we're doing the equation from part B, alpha window function integration for our integral, definite integral, from 0 for the lower limit, and then the upper limit is x. You can just type the x as the upper limit of integration. You then can put alpha trace y3 as the um, integrand in the parentheses, so that'll show you a y3 on your calculator screen as your integrand, and then dx. Your calculator doesn't mind if you have the same variable as the upper limit of integration and as the independent variable in your integrand, but on the AP Calculus exam your work should be mathematical, not calculator syntax. So we need to write down, since we're using the calculator to compute this value, the integral that we used in um, that calculation. So we're going to put 2500 plus the integral from 0 to t of s of x minus r of x dx in our work. And since we're using t as the upper limit, we don't have to write it out twice because that's going to apply to both of these times. So when you press enter, Hopefully your calculator gives you 2,492.369 cubic yards of sand. Alright, so for 
um, the last part of our table here, we need to do the same thing. So in your calculator, you can hit second enter and pull up what we just uh, used as our integral. And then cursor over to the upper limit of integration and change that x to a 6. Um, so that we can find out how much sand is on the beach at that end endpoint um, time 6. And hopefully you will get 2,493.277. And so this is all the work that needs to be shown other than the answer. We need to answer the question asked. It says, what time t is the amount of sand on the beach a minimum? So looking across our table, the smallest number that we see is 2,492.369 cubic yards of sand. So the time where that occurs, the minimum is going to be at t equals 5.118. And the amount of sand is 2,492.369. So we are needing to indicate the answer. You cannot just allow the table to so-called speak for itself. You must indicate what the minimum was um, and make your answer clear. Um, okay, so that completes problem two, and um, let's see, we can talk about the scoring now. Okay, so the first problem that we did, the mosquito problem, part A is worth one point, and that one point you get for showing that r of 6 is positive. Um, part B is worth two points. You get one point for figuring out what r prime of 6 is and one point for the answer with the reason. So increasing at a decreasing rate was the answer and the reason was because r prime of 6 was a negative. Part C is worth two points. You get one point for your integral and you get one point for your answer. Part D is worth four points, and this is quite common that the absolute minimum, absolute maximum is worth more points. They have specific targets they're looking for in your work. So you get one point for showing the integral that you use to calculate the values in your table, one point for the absolute maximum value of 1,039 mosquitoes. One point for figuring out what the two um, critical time values were with their corresponding um, numbers of mosquitoes in the table. And then the last point is for what's called complete analysis. So everything that we showed in our work is needed and is part of the complete analysis for that problem. Then for question two that we worked on, the sand problem, part A is worth two points. One point is for your integral and one point is for your answer with the units. It said indicate units of measure so that's counted as part of your answer. Part B is worth three points. You get one point for your integrand, which was s of x minus r of x. One point for your limits of integration, so the zero is the lower limit and t is the upper limit. And one point for the answer. The answer would be that integral plus 2,500. Part c is only one point for the answer only, negative 1.909. And then part B is worth three points. You get one point for showing that you set y prime of t equal to zero, one point for finding your critical time value, and the last point is for your answer with justification. So the answer included both the time and the amount of sand, 
as well as complete justification, which is again all the work shown. All right, you have the rest of the period to work on the group work problems with your peers, and even you can move on to the homework problems if time allows. Anything that's not finished in class is for homework. Good luck and have a great day. Bye.